a giant public school in Texas. Apparently, won the state boys basketball championship in 2000. They got a water spout spigot on this side, on the front of the building. And they got a water spout spigot on the other side of the building. I gotta start having, um, there's this little handy handy wrench I got off Amazon. I gotta start having that on me for this kind of stuff, but who designs the electricity for a giant public school or giant school? I don't know if it's public or private and, and has no external electrical outlets on the front of the building. Who designs a, a, a public school like that? You have two water spigots on it. One on each side of the front of the building. You have no external outlets. Like who designs that? A collab between uh, Helen Keller and CV Wonder Incorporated? I don't understand. I really don't. Like, I don't get it. I get the water. It gets so hot here in Texas. But, like, what you purposely didn't put any external outlets on the front of the building to save money. Is that what, that's what you did? That was that was the uh, the most important thing to you? Saving money and not having any external outlets in the front of the building? I think buildings that provide, like, services and public services are, like, should try to do that throughout their entire, like, like everything that they do should be it shouldn't contradict providing a service and not having external outlets to save money contradicts providing a service i don't understand um just wanted to talk real briefly about the camping hammock that i use if you're going to use one of those camping hammocks and you're going to use those metal clip hooks just make sure that they're an adequate capacity for a half of your load with probably a factory safety to be careful because uh when i was setting it up the other day that spot by the water my my smaller hook uh broke and i might have like kind of jumped on it and, like applied a bit of an impact load but still like you should have hooks that are way strong like strong enough and they won't break because it broke and i just slammed on a bunch of rocks and now i just have one hook on it the hooks are making it a lot easier and a lot faster to hook those things up, but just make sure that they're strong enough to support, you know, your weight and then some some factor of safety because my back, like lower back area, is pretty bruised right now. And it's because of those rocks. Ah. But it was only like a couple feet off the ground, so I'll get over it. Any, I feel like any job you have in life, any task you perform, any anything, anything you can learn, any practical knowledge from, harness the practical knowledge in life. Any practical knowledge you can gain is always going to be useful. And understanding what practical knowledge is, is just knowledge that you can use in multiple different scenarios um, and just use basically throughout the course of your life. and. You know, anything you do on a regular basis, anything you need on a regular basis, any knowledge that relates to things that you do every day, that's practical knowledge. So, I worked about two, one and a half years, two years in the commercial building rehabilitation industry. And two things I really picked up were every single building, most buildings uh, commercially, they always give you, they always have access, exterior access to uh, both electrical utilities, electrical, electrical exterior outlets, and then also like that public school I was looking at, um, they usually provide some sort of access to water. You know, granted it's it's the buildings, but I mean, you know, I feel like unless somebody is you know gonna police it, you know, and tell you you can't use it, um, I don't know. Then if they try to, if they stop you, they stop you. But if they don't, they don't. So it's basically my rule of thumb. You know, a little electricity for my phone isn't gonna, from all the electricity they probably use on a monthly basis, is it's not gonna really impact their electricity bill too much. Um, you know, stealing isn't right, but. I don't know. These are like those kind of things. If you go into commercial commercial store and you're just window shopping, you know, water and electricity are usually things if you ask them for, they will provide you as a public service. So 
you can look at it from a couple angles. Uh, you know, unless somebody makes a big deal about it, I'm not gonna make a big deal about it. But these are resources that are available. They're all around, electrical and water. You know, there's commercial buildings everywhere because we live in a capitalistic society. So you're not gonna have any trouble finding any of those in most areas. So, practical knowledge you can use is always gonna be helpful and useful. I mean, personally to me, I think the most important knowledge you can learn is the knowledge that gets used the most often, and that is practical knowledge. So if you're not absorbing practical knowledge every day like a sponge, you're doing yourself a disservice, and you're limiting yourself of resources and, and useful information. Um, one of the reasons I talk about meditation as often as I do is because I believe that meditation is probably the most practical, useful skill the most practical, useful, underutilized skill in today's society. Um, and I think that once science progresses and starts connecting and monitoring the results and the impact of meditation to different parts of the body, when it's focused on different parts of the body, once people see, people need to see the results in order for them to understand that something's important i guess and like it's hard for people to just listen and understand like they have to see results firsthand and they have to see the data or statistics that show that something's useful in order for them to like you know try something just you know and like learn it to see that it's useful um and that you know meditation is like that so I mentioned I had a really good idea for an app when I was recycling and picking up the garbage by the church. Um, my idea for an app is an app that connects, I guess, whatever entity would find like the garbage on a property, like, like certain properties around this country are littered with litter, garbage. And when I think about it, the entities that are going to care the most about that garbage are those that own that property, the property owners. No one else, it's really no one else's responsibility and nobody else is gonna care or give a shit as much except for the people who own that property. So I wanna, I'm thinking of an app that connects property owners, um, you know, anybody that's responsible for a property's cleanliness and, you know, litter. So like different areas, different buildings, it could be government, it could be police, and I think in most cases, it's going to be property owners. So think of an app that connects entities that are responsible for specific properties, cleanliness and amount of litter. And it connects them to um, homeless people who are, you know, scattered. They're outside. I think they're great candidates for recycling. And, you know, they're looking for work. They're looking for resources. So I'm thinking of an app that connects property owners that are responsible for an area's cleanliness and amount of litter, amount of garbage on a property. And it connects them with homeless people who would be willing to um, recycle and to collect garbage. And because homeless people are in need of like basic resources and things like that, the app would basically have these entities, the property owners, reward homeless people once properties were identified on the app, you know, this is a, a litter score, you know, one, one through 10, 10 being the worst, just like covered in garbage. You know, property owners can take photos, can take photos from far away, can take photos from close up to help identify where the litter on a property is and also give that property maybe a rating. And then the app would organize these properties in an area based on, you know, the worst ratings and match them with homeless people who, you know, a lot of homeless people have phones now, have technology. It would match them with homeless people who would be willing to recycle and clean up the litter. And in doing so, you know, they can identify where the litter is from photos, both far away and close up. And once that property is cleaned up and a homeless person you know, does their due diligence, goes around, and then the entity that owns the property or cares about, you know, the aesthetics of the property, um, you know, make sure that the area has been cleaned up, you know, the pictures that they took and uploaded to the app, 
the problem areas where the most litter were, those areas were taken care of. And even if a, a homeless person has a phone, maybe there's some way they can take pictures of the same area where, you know, that had litter before and had garbage before and take a after photo verifying. And then the property owner can also verify themselves. And then once that's verified, after the homeless person, you know, cleans up the area, then they could be rewarded with some kind of a resource that they would find useful, whether that's, you know, some kind of uh, a coupon to a, a gas station, whether that's uh, money towards a motel room, whether that's money towards some kind of a resource like water. Um, you know, it could be so many things because the homeless people need so many things. But like, I see two problems. I see a lot of garbage and a lot of litter in this country and nobody really, nobody really has a good method of like identifying and uh, addressing that problem. And then you also have homeless people amongst the country who are in need of work. And you know, a lot of people socially, superficially, they don't want to pick up garbage outside because they're fucking sissies because it looks bad and it makes them look poor or whatever fucking, you know, stupid fucking idea they have in their head because of society. Um, but homeless people don't care. They, you know, they're looking for work. They're looking for ways to acquire resources that they need. And I think that would be a great, um, you know, option for them and a great opportunity where two problems in this country could easily be addressed in connecting two entities, you know, property owners, individuals who, you know, care about the aesthetics of a property, whether that's the government, whether it's police, whether that's, uh, you know, a private property owner. <clears throat> And then homeless people who are already out and about already. So a lot of the garbage is created because of homeless people. So it also teaches the homeless people that like firsthand, maybe they shouldn't do this. But at the same time, I hope, you know, they don't take it upon themselves. If somebody's caught littering to try to create work for themselves. Nowadays, there's a lot of security systems. There's a lot of monitoring. So that in itself would take care of that problem. If like a homeless person thought they would be you know, super crafty and they could go just like throw shit on a property and then a property owner could identify it, upload it to the app. And then a homeless person could just make money by littering and clean up the same litter that they produce. So there's, you know, at the same time as the property owner's responsibility to monitor that property and make sure that that doesn't happen. And you have security cameras and things like that in a lot of buildings that would take care of that problem. So that's like one problem I could see in that but that shouldn't be an issue if property owners do their due diligence and monitoring their property. So I, if anybody, I don't have the resource, I have the resources, the skills or the time to develop an app like this. I'm just throwing the idea out there. You know, if anybody agrees, if anybody thinks it's a good idea, if anybody knows how to do something like that, you know, there you go. You got, you got a great, uh, a great idea, a great app you can develop. And I'm sure, you know, it solves two really important problems and, it would be a really uh, popular app, I think, if it was developed, uh, you know, accordingly and appropriately. So hopefully somebody listens to this and, you know, gets the ball rolling or ha sees some flaws in this design and, you know, can address them. But I think, if anything, this is a definitely beginning thought of an app that can be, if anything, refined and developed. So go for it.